Good morning. This is Artie, the Vintage Stitcher, and today is Thursday. We are going to be finishing up our baby quilt today. So I am so happy that you are with me today, and I am so happy that you have made it to the end of our quilt along. Um, we've been working on three-hour gingham baby quilt, and the pattern was free on Fat Quarter Shop. So if you've been kind of watching along and you're like, yes, I want to do that, I can now honestly say I can do that, do this quilt. Um, jump on to Fat Quarter Shop, download the pattern, get, get, get three fabrics, and hop to it. It is a fun, fun quilt. I did make more than one, um, and I'm going to be showing you those in some later videos. But today, we are going to be attaching the binding, all right? Um, so last week, we quilted it, so we should have it all quilted. I have mine all quilted, and I decided to do just the serpentine stitch in one direction, the long way, all the way down, so it's um, vertical, yes, vertical um, stitching all the way down the whole thing. Very, um, like a very neat, tidy stitching, quilting all the way down. The stitches are about an inch, inch and a half apart, um, which is a good width apart um, for a baby quilt because it's going to be washed and dried a lot. Um, or even if you're using it as a lap quilt or a camper quilt or something, um, you want, you, you want a little closer stitching so that when it's washed and dried, everything kind of holds together a little bit better. It's gonna be just a little bit more durable. So I did trim off all the excess fabric um, from the backing and the batting. We've got that all trimmed up and I have the, the binding made. Um, and But I'm gonna go over with you on how to make the binding. I, I'm not gonna just leave you hanging there. Now there is a little math involved in making a binding, okay? Most patterns are gonna tell you how much yardage you need um, and how many strips to cut to make the binding. So that is always nice. You can always just go off of the pattern. But if you are making the pattern larger or smaller and you wanna save on fabric or you know you're gonna need more fabric, there is a very, very easy way to calculate how much fabric you're going to need and how many strips of fabric you're going to need with the fabrics you're going to need. For your binding. Now I generally use a two and a half inch strip of fabric salvage to salvage um, for my bindings. Some people like two and a quarter inch, some people like two and three quarters inch. That is a personal preference. I have always done two and a half inch, that's where I'm comfortable. You can kind of play with it and see where you're comfortable, all right? So the math is very simple. If you have, like this baby quilt was 40 by 48, so you're going to take the 240 inch, which equals 80, and the 248, which equals 96, 96, and 80 is like 186, okay? So you're going to take those measurements all the way around, 40, 48, 40, 48, and you're going to add those all together, all right? Then you're going to add two inches per corner, so that's another eight inches, and two inches for your stop and start. So that's 10 inches total. So you're, you're 40, 48, 40, 48, and 10 inches. And you're gonna come up to a number. It's gonna be 100 and some inches, 180 inches, 208 inches, whatever it is. You're gonna take that number and you're going to divide it by your fabric. So if you have a regular fabric, which is normally 40 to 42 inches wide, and you're cutting two and a half inch strips, you're going to divide that number by 40. All right, I always cut it a little short, or 42. That's going to tell you how many strips that you need. All right, and in this case, it came up 4.65 strips. So you have to bump that up. So you need five strips of regular with fabric to go all the way around your quilt. Five strips at two and a half inches. So that's roughly a half a yard of fabric. And generally a half a yard of fabric is, half a yard to three quarters of a yard of fabric is going to cover 
a pretty big quilt. So if you're, I have something in my eye, sorry. I keep winking at you. Um, so if you're looking to do a king size quilt, if you were to buy a yard of fabric for the binding, you're going to be perfectly safe, okay? It's always good to have too much than not enough. Um, but if you want an exact amount, if you're on a budget and you want an exact amount, that is how you're going to do your calculations for your binding, all right? So then what you're going to do is you're going to take your two and a half inch strips and you are going to sew them together end to end so that you have, let me open this up, so that you have long, long, long strips just like this. Okay. And I know there's fancy ways you can do it on an angle like I did here. Quite honestly, as a beginner, just sew them together end to end. It's not going to make a difference. Just make sure you cut that selvage off. Make sure you have a quarter of an inch. It's going to be okay. Nobody's going to go, oh my goodness, you didn't disperse your seam correctly. It's all right. There's times I just get lazy and I just whip them through the machine end to end straight across just because I don't want to fidget around with angles. And it's a baby quilt and or it's your first quilt. Whatever you're comfortable with, don't panic over it. You're going to get better. You're going to try different techniques with di your quilts after this. You're going to advance. You're going to get better. You're going to go, hey, I want to do that. And I was the same way. I had no idea how to stop and start my quilt so I was winging it and it looked like crap it looked terrible and I went into the quilt store one day and I was like oh how do you stop and start like that and she's like that's just a basic stop and start and she showed me how to do it in which I'm going to show you how to do it and it's going to be pretty darn impressive all right so you have all of your strips sewn together end to end you're going to press them in half okay lengthwise like this, right in half. You're gonna keep your edges nice and neat and clean, very straight. This is one place you want to kind of be kind of picky about because you want that to get, we're only gonna be using a quarter inch seam allowance and you want that to be caught up in that seam allowance. If you don't have them straight and per close to perfect, you're gonna be sorry when you get it all done and then there's gonna be a, a loose binding later later on. So for your basic stop and start so that you don't have to like measure and try and sew it and fidget under the sewing machine, I'm going to show you a really impressive beginner stop and start. So when you are pressing your, when you start pressing your strips together like this, what I want you to do is I want you to fold that first corner down like this. All right. And you're creating like a little finished edge and then fold it in half so your your end is going to look like this and we are going to start sewing with this end here all right we're going to start sewing with this end here and then when we come back around we are just going to tuck our tail in here and it is going to look so impressive at the end that nobody's going to know you're a beginner. I promise. All right. So we're going to get started. I am going to adjust the camera a little bit. I'm hoping that you're going to be able to see what I'm doing on the machine. All right. So I have my walking foot on the machine again. I have my thread. I like to do matching thread. Um, it's totally up to you. I'm using a contrasting thread today because I want you to be able to see what I'm doing at my corners and at my stops and starts. All right. So I'm using contrasting thread today. You're going to use a matching thread. All right. So I'm going to pause this video. I'm going to try and get the camera a bit closer or angled down a little bit more. So you may not see my face quite, quite as much. All right. So just one moment. All right, I hope you can see what I am doing here, okay? Um, and I'm not gonna take you all the way around. I'm gonna do like two corners and then I'm gonna do the rest and then I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna show you how to stop it. But 
you're gonna and you're gonna need your whole space again just like when you were quilting because this does take up a lot of space all right so you are going to start you're going to pick a starting point on your quilt and you are going to have your corner piece your fancy folded corner piece is going to be your start we are going to start sewing about here we're not going to start at this very top we are going to leave a tail and we are going to start sewing about there we have our quarter inch seam allowance we have um, our thread stitch um, set to 3.5 or 4 depending on your machine all right so you're going to use the edge of your walking foot as your guide you're going to line up your binding with the edge of your quilt and you're going to hold that there. If you feel more comfortable pinning, by all means, pin, okay? This gets a little tricky. So, you're gonna hear some noise of the sewing machine. So we're gonna start, you're gonna lock stitch that, all right? Always get it so your machine stops with the needle down, and then kind of hold this at the end here keep it nice and smooth and straight don't worry about what's going on over here worry about what's going on right here right here that's it this little area everybody panics about what's going on over here as long as you're not knocking stuff off the table you're okay all right quarter of an inch we're gonna go and all the way down And we're going to come to an edge or a corner and we are going to stop approximately one quarter of an inch away from the corner okay i'll show you what i mean and it's about a fingertip you can mark it if you want do a locking stitch lock your stitch there okay and then we're going to take the quilt off the machine so this is what it's going to look like you're going to have a little gap there all right that's okay it's supposed to be that way we are going to twist our quilt because we are going to start working on the next edge let me get my pen back out because i want to show you exactly what i'm doing so to do a mitered corner on a binding what you're going to do is you're going to bring your binding straight up so that your corner of your binding here is on an angle okay so you're bringing this straight up so it looks like this so your your angle starts at that corner okay can you see how I'm doing that make sure and then you're going to bring this straight back down and you're going to line your little flapper up right there it's going to be lined up your top your fold here is going to be lined up with the edge of the top of this quilt and the edge of your binding your raw binding is going to be lined up with the raw edge of your next side okay does that all make sense so you're going to have this little like flapper thing like sticking out like this all right so let's do that again straight up and straight down nice little square nice little square and go ahead feel free to pin it and pin it okay and then what you're going to do a lot of people are going to say, well, I'm going to start sewing down here. Nope. You're going to start sewing right at the very top of this corner because you are going to anchor that. That's your quarter inch. You're going to anchor that and you're going to sew straight down. Oh, sorry. You're going to start here. Okay. At the very top, you're going to anchor this because this is going to get anchored. It has to be sewn in. You're going to anchor that and you're going to sew, sew straight down all right so we're going to do that i'm going to show you so lock stitch and continue down
And I'm going to take this off the machine and I'm going to show you how that looks. So this is what it's going to look like. All right. When you open this up and you flip that over, that's going to create your mitered corner, your nice mitered corner. Okay. It's going to look good. I promise. It's going to look good. All right. So now we're going to go on to the next corner. So let's do that. I think this is a short edge. And you just keep stitching down. I let my I let my binding just hang on to the floor right next to me. I don't wind it. I don't try and control it. I just let it hang there. Just let it sit on the floor. Just let it sit there. And I just keep moving section by section. I let the machine do the work, okay? Machine do the work. Come back. Remember, we're going to stop at this corner now. We're coming to another quarter, corner, quarter of an inch, approximately a quarter of an inch from there. And do a locking stitch. All right. We're going to do the same little flip with the on the corner up straight back down make sure your little flaps are nice and even if your flaps are all cattywampus it your corner is going to be all cattywampus all right so let me get this twisted here this is the hardest part is getting your is twisting your quilt in a small space. All right. So straight up, straight down. Drop a pin. Don't be afraid to use pins or clips or whatever you're comfortable with. Nice and even there, nice and even across the top, nice and even here. Start stitching here and go down to the next corner. Okay, so I'm gonna pause the video. We're gonna, I'm gonna continue around and then I'm gonna show you how to do the stop and start and it's magical. Okay, so we're coming back around to our last edge here. You're sewing, sewing, sewing and you're coming close to the end and you're starting to sweat. <laughs> One, because you've been wrestling this big quilt around your sewing machine. And two, you're thinking, how am I going to make this look good? Okay, so here's our tail. Remember our tail that's coming up? So we're going to keep stitching. Keep it nice and lined up until we get to our tail. Here's our hanging tail, remember? Okay, not a big deal. We've got all this space. We've got this gap here that we didn't start sewing until we were down in here, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to take that top piece, we're going to kind of just guesstimate, and we're going to trim it off. <gasps> and everybody's going, <gasps> all right, it's all right. It's all good, okay? It's all good. So at this point, you can pin if you want. Um. You just keep sewing, 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 sewing until you get really close to that tail. You hold that tail nice and kind of tight, taut. You take this, your other end here, you open your tail, and you slide that piece right in there. Okay? And then you just continue to sew right back down to where you started. All right? So I'm going to show you what it looks like when it's finished because it looks good. When you are finished and you open that up, it looks like that. You have tucked your raw edge into a finished edge. It's like a little pocket. Okay. So now if you want to get really professional, you can come back and you can stitch that closed. Um, that's totally up to you. A lot of times that's where I put my little year charm. On a quilt I'll tack that right there or I'll tack a little button right there or I'll tack something cute right there a little applique or my initials or something um, get creative 
But if you wanted to just be plain, you come in with your black thread and you just stitch that closed. And But it's not going anywhere. Look at It's not going anywhere. And we're going to be stitching this around the back. So I'm going to pause again. I'm going to adjust the camera and I'm going to show you what we're going to do to cover up these raw edges. All right. Just one moment. And I am back. All right. So this is what the back of your quilt looks like. Um, and this is what your binding looks like. You have it sewn to the front and you kind of just take it and you flip it. Oh, sorry. got to get it on camera. You take it and you're going to kind of just flip it open all the way to the front, or all the way around the front. Okay. And it's going to want to flip. It's going to want to flip open. It's not a big deal. And we are going to fold it over to the back. I don't know if there's a good way of showing this. So you're, you're going to kind of flip this open and it's going to be, it's going to look like this. Okay. This is where these sweet little clips come in hand. <laughs> I've never had these before. So I'm very, very excited. Um, one of my favorite viewers sent them to me and I'm so excited to use them on my very first binding. So, because I've heard they are just amazing. So I've got to get in here. So what you do, I always use pins and then I spend, you know, two hours hand stitching and poking myself. So what you're going to want to do, but if you don't have these, you can use pins. <laughs> so what you want to do is you want to flip this binding over. And the whole goal is to cover up this stitch right here, this straight stitch that's going around. Okay, that is the stitch that we made putting the binding on the front. So we're going to cover that up. That is the goal. So you want your binding kind of pulled taut so it's nice and smooth in the front. We're going to pull this over and we're going to clip this in place or secure it in place. All right. And you're going to do that all the way around your quilt and some places are going to be a little bit more difficult than others that's okay you just kind of wiggle that binding in you're going to have a little bit more room you're going to have a little bit more what's the word i'm looking for control when you're stitching it okay you're gonna have a little bit more control when you're stitching it so and then when you get to these corners, let me get to a corner here. Let me pull this up. When you get to a corner, okay, this is going to want to just kind of, it's going to do it itself. So you're coming along this corner or this edge and you're securing. And then the corner is going to want to fold itself. Let it do its thing, okay? And then what you're going to do is you're going to, straighten this one out pull this nice and taut so that this this next edge is nice and even and pulled nice and smooth on the front and then you're just going to flip it down so that when it comes down sorry i'm off camera again you're going to just bring it like this and then you're going to flip it down and it's going to create a miter on the back side also. Okay. And then this fat, this next, this next edge of this quilt is going to kind of automatically fold and want to cover up this seam. All right. So pop a clip there. Okay let it let it do what it wants to do it's going to naturally want to do its own thing and then you just kind of come around i know this is hard to see come around and you continue clipping and securing the binding all the way around okay okay so this is, let me get this nice and close. This is what your corner is going to look like. All right. Clip it in place. These are just temporary clips. 
because then what you're going to do is you're going to come back with needle and thread any needle you want I know everybody always asks me what size needle what size needle whatever needle you're comfortable with <laughs> sometimes I use a big long gigantic needle because I'm feeling blind that day or whatever <laughs> you know I just can't see or I'm just having I'm just struggling sometimes I just can't get it together and I just need a big needle whatever needle you're comfortable with just make sure it's sharp you're gonna need a sharp needle and you're not gonna do any particular fancy stitch all right here's the key to making the back of your binding look good because you're gonna hand stitch all of this down at this point okay any way you want here's the key to making it look professional matching thread so I will use black thread because if I come over with my stitches you're gonna kind of come under here and then you're gonna grab your black binding but if you go over your stitches in any way shape or form and you have a white thread or an off color thread it's going to show on your black binding so always 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 match your thread to your binding and it's going to look professional period doesn't matter how neat or tidy your your stitches are doesn't matter if they show a little bit it doesn't matter if they're not perfect if your thread matches your binding it's going to look good okay there's no fancy stitch to stitch down a binding um now here's where i have the stop and start it's a little bit bulkier there it's a little bit bulkier there that's okay just clip it it's going to be all right so i just keep going around just keep adding my clips and then tonight, I'm going to turn on a good Hallmark movie, pour a glass of wine, put on my fuzzy slippers, and I am going to stitch around this entire back and stitch down that binding and take my clips off and your quilt will be finished. So I'm going to adjust this camera. I really hope that I explained how to put the binding on well. Um, I hope my camera showed up really okay for you and the angle was good. Um, please have grace with me with the camera. You gotta remember I'm doing all of this. <laughs> I'm I'm sewer, talker, camera person, everything all by myself here in my sewing room. Um, let me give you another quick glimpse of how it's going to look, okay? So you're just folding this over, folding this over and clipping. And these clips are amazing. Uh, blah, 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 blah. I don't know how I ever lived without them. I'm such a cheapskate. <laughs> I don't know how I ever lived without them. Thank you so much, Deb. <laughs> uh, they're just awesome. So I'm going to be pulling out my black thread, matching thread, my needle, my wine, and my movies. And I'm going to stitch this down. So we will probably talk about this in a Friday's video um, and I'll have some extra tips on how to make your quilt look professional on Friday's video um, when when I come back. Um, I'm, I'm actually recording this on Wednesday. It's going to air on Thursday. I'm going to talk about it on Friday again. <laughs> so it really stinks having to go to a day job. So if you guys can help me out, I would really love to quit my day job. Hit that subscribe button. Hit the notification bell. Help me stay home from my day job so I can quilt and craft and talk with you every single day. But in the meantime, be kind, spread love, and find peace.